Whether you include a hob or sink on your kitchen island is a really popular design discussion and in my last video I talked about having a hob or cooktop on your kitchen island. So in this video I'm going to be focusing on having a sink in your kitchen island. The pros, cons and considerations to think about so you'll know if it's the right choice for you and your kitchen design. Naturally, there'll be some overlap to the points discussed in this video from my last video, but I think it's worthwhile to include them here so they're all in one place. Right, let's get into it. Why would you want to have the sink in a kitchen island? Having a sink in your kitchen island is quite a common choice for many kitchen island designs, and this could be for a number of reasons. When you don't have a window in the kitchen. Sometimes kitchens can be positioned in the heart of our homes, and that means that there aren't any external windows on the walls that cabinets are up against. Windows provide a natural break and they're an ideal location to put your sink underneath as there's nothing overhead to sort of hit your head on or feel enclosed by. And sometimes, if you're lucky, there's a nice view to look at while you're stood doing the dishes. It's the classic spot for a sink and for good reason, really. However, when there's no window in your kitchen to do that, Having the sink on the kitchen island can still achieve some of these things. There's nothing overhead, again, to hit your head on or feel enclosed by, and you're stood looking into the room, which can feel a bit more social, especially if it's an open plan layout. It can create a quite pleasant washing up experience, if there is such a thing when you don't have enough countertop space against the wall. So fitting a hob or range cooker or cooktop as well as a sink requires a good amount of space and a, and a long run of cabinets and countertop. They'll need to be set in from the ends of the run and countertop for safety and installation regulations and they'll need some separation from one another again for safety and sometimes insulation regulations but also so you've got some workable countertop space. The mistake I see people make here is trying to fit everything on that run of cabinets against the wall in an attempt to try and keep their island clear. However, unless you have a really long run of worktop to fit all those things in as well as keep the separation, it's going to lead to a poor layout with everything feeling cluttered. So when you don't have enough space for both on that run, moving the sink to the kitchen island actually makes a lot of sense from a layout point of view. It gives you that separation needed between things and creates larger open spaces of countertop that's far more useful and practical. Aesthetics. A classic design principle and one I mention quite a lot on this channel is the idea of symmetry or balance. And by having the sink in the island separate to the hob means that there's only one appliance in each countertop. This means that you could centre the hob in the run of cabinets against the wall and build your cabinets out to be nice and symmetrical. This can be especially great if you are having a range cooker rather than a hob or a cooktop as it can be quite a striking focal point. And the same can be done with the sink in the island. You can center that and build outwards and create the island around the sink. Having both the sink and the hob on the same run or in a kitchen island together can feel cluttered and unbalanced and it can mean that you lose that focal point to your kitchen and wow factor. Functionality. Having the sink in your kitchen island can help to create that perfect working triangle or kitchen zone. I'm sure you've heard of the working triangle before, but just in case, it's tying together your sink, hob and fridge. Having them all in an easy sort of pivot and step or two to get to one another, rather than at just opposite ends of the kitchen. And in doing so, this helps to create a more functional flow and working environment for your kitchen. So having your sink in the kitchen island, with your hob perhaps behind you on a run of cabinets, can help create this working triangle and these points. It can also be a great way to create what I'd call a wet kitchen zone, keeping your sink and dishwasher together as one working zone. Things to consider when having the sink in a kitchen island. So now that we've gone over some of the reasons and scenarios why you might want the sink in your kitchen island, there are a few practical things to consider. Plumbing. If you decide that you want to have your sink in the kitchen island, keep in mind that you're going to need to get some plumbing in place. You're going to need your water feed and waste pipe. This means chopping up the floor and plumbing these things earlier on in the renovation process. And depending on your circumstances, this could be a bigger job than you anticipate. So speak with your builder sooner rather than later to work out the feasibility of all of this. However, if it's an extension or it's going to be a full renovation process and you want to have that sink in the kitchen island, now's the time to do it. Dumping ground. Be aware that the sink area can be a bit of a dumping ground for dirty plates and cups and things like that. Let's face it, we all do it. 
Having the sink in the island may turn your beautiful new kitchen island into a bit of a mess magnet, which can really dull that wow factor a kitchen island can provide. So be honest with yourself. If you're going to struggle to keep that sink area free from clutter, or you really want that wow factor of a kitchen island, then maybe having the sink in the island isn't the best choice for you. Practicality. If you're having the sink in the kitchen island, keep an eye out on the layout and the practicalities of it. This is where I think about creating that wet kitchen zone I mentioned earlier. I highly recommend placing the dishwasher next to the sink if you're going to have it in the island. That way you won't be dripping water everywhere after you've rinsed the plates before you put them in the dishwasher and all the plumbing is already there next to it. And similarly, part of this wet, or I suppose washing zone I'm sort of creating here, I recommend placing the bin next to the sink along with the dishwasher. So you can scrape plates easily before you rinse them and put them in the dishwasher or just wash them, whatever your workflow is. Also make sure that your island has enough space to fit the size and type of sink that you want, along with the draining area and enough countertop space so you've got plenty of space to work with and things don't start dropping off the edge. Sink and tap. Considering the type and style of sink and tap that you install in your kitchen island can actually have quite a big impact on the overall design and feel of your kitchen. For instance, a Belfast or Butler or farmhouse, whichever one you call it, that type of sink can be a great focal point and a great feature to a kitchen island. But they're not the best option if you're looking for something more discreet or contemporary and flush fitting. An undermount sink will be far more contemporary and discreet. As well as this, the type and style of tap that you choose can play an important role too. Because it's the only thing that's sort of sticking up from the island, your eye will naturally be drawn towards it and it's gonna be the first thing you sort of notice on the kitchen island. Opting for something a little bit more compact or intentionally stylish can help to keep things discreet or create a nice intentional feature and focal point to your kitchen island. There's no real right or wrong here, you know, your sink and your styles, it's all a personal choice, but it's just something to be aware of and think about when you're designing your kitchen. How big should a kitchen island be with a sink? Ideally around 1.8 meters wide. This allows for a standard 60 centimeter dishwasher, a 60 centimeter sink cabinet, and a 60 centimeter other cabinet, which I'd recommend to be a bin. This gives enough space for dirty dishes to kind of stack up on one side and then once you clean them stack and drain on the other side. Anything much smaller than this and you're going to run the risk of feeling sort of too cramped or things not having enough space to kind of pile up or drain and things might start dropping off the edges. I also recommend that the island is deeper than a standard 60 centimeter cabinet. I always recommend at least 90 centimeters or 900 millimeters. This gives that bit of extra depth behind the sink so splashes and things don't just fall straight onto the floor, they'll land on the worktop. Saying all this, these are you know ideal measurements. If you've got more room, then great expand on this and create a bigger kitchen island. However, if you don't have enough room for this sized island, you may still be able to make things work. Just think carefully about what's going into the island and how much space you'll have and how you intend to use it. Let me know in the comments below if your team sink, hob or nothing at all on your kitchen island. It's always fun to read the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.